in the British Army. My goal today is to explore how America can regain its leadership in the world and why that leadership is more necessary than ever. Iran's ambitions are clear and its capabilities are growing. For many years, they have been developing long-range missile capabilities and their own nuclear weapon program. And during those years, America has opposed those efforts. Yet the Obama administration has launched negotiations in which the goal has shifted. The administration no longer seeks to prevent nuclear enrichment. Now it seeks merely to regulate it. Congress should pass bills to reinstate sanctions in advance if negotiations fail and require approval of any agreement should one be reached. As you might know, I've also been fortunate to have a father and a brother who helped shape America's foreign policy from the Oval Office. I recognize that as a result, my views will often be held up in comparison to theirs. Look, just for the record, one more time, I love my brother, I love my dad, I actually love my mother as well, I hope that's okay. <laughs> and I admire their service to the nation and the difficult decisions that they had to make. But I'm my own man, and my views are shaped by my own thinking and my own experiences. I want to take a moment to talk about the controversy surrounding Bibi Netanyahu's uh, joint session speech to Congress that's coming up in the first week of March. I, for one, am really eager to hear what he has to say. I'm surprised that the administration is upset to hear from a close and valuable ally on such a sensitive topic. If we want to build confidence and trust of the American position, we have to listen. The president should call on leaders of both parties to fix the budget and to address the shortfalls in our defense spending. 